they told me here in New York. Hello, hello. You know, Kelly, who's more excited about being here than you? Me. Because I was a South by Southwest virgin. This is my first time, and I think it is so cool. Whitney, how are you fun. feeling? Great. So excited to be with you yeah, on stage. Yeah, me too. So I feel that too. By the way, Kelly, when you said it's 26 million um, users, Whitney goes, it's 29. <laughs> 29. So I was at the Bumble activation yesterday, Whitney. I have to tell you this. I am really excited to see that you guys have decided that you, you want to ban on uh, shirtless selfies in the mirror. Yes, I'm not sure why anybody yeah. wants to take Can't, those Doesn't to that away. deserve a round of applause? Because yeah. do you really want to date somebody whose picture is a shirtless selfie of him in the mirror grinning? I'll go first, no you don't. No you don't. So we're going to talk about Bumble. I had a great time at the activation, but before we do that, I wanted to get into a little bit of Whitney's backstory. Um, you know, many of you know it, but I think it's so interesting for her to bring us up to date about what, what she went through and how she got through the other side. You know, there's a great saying, Whitney, that says, success is the best revenge. Is this an example of revenge? No, it's not. I, I don't believe revenge is, is part of my um, agenda, and it never really has been. Um, we, I love the saying that revenge is, is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. So we genuinely... Sometimes we want the other person to die. <laughs> well... Sometimes yeah. we do. Sometimes. Sometimes. Um, but in this case, no, you know what? I, I'm a firm believer that just like hate spreads hate, love and kindness spread love and kindness. Mm -hmm. and we have chosen to take that approach, and we just wanted to put that at the helm of everything we do, and we harbor no animosity towards anyone. We're doing our own thing. I, listen, but that said, you filed a lawsuit, and I know you can't talk about the specifics of the lawsuit, but I am curious about, you worked in an, uh, worked in an environment where you were called a whore, you were called a gold digger, you were certainly undervalued time after time, um, you left tender and filed a lawsuit against the company. What are the lessons that you learned from that time? So, you know, coming out of, of a very public situation like that, here I was, 24 years old, not a famous person, had, you know, really no experience with the media at large, and I realized how scary the internet was. Yeah. And, you know, the misogyny that, you know, many women have experienced in real life, I started to experience it digitally in a really, really painful way. And all of a sudden I was getting death threats and threats against my character and I was being called so many names that it started to define me. Mm -hmm. And I realized that misogyny is just such a dangerous and rampant issue. And contagious, is it not? It's incredibly contagious. Mm -hmm. And you know, what we've tried to do with how we run our company at Bumble is you know, not, not follow these rules of misogyny. So if you're working in a male-dominated space, women generally feel or can feel like there's only one seat at the table. And all of a sudden- Only one seat at the table for, for the, a woman. For a woman. And all people of a sudden- People say that, black people also feel that sometimes, that if they're in an environment, which is in most of the cases, it's predominantly white, many blacks will also feel, well, there's only one, and I want to make sure I keep it for myself. Right. You're and saying women operate that some, same way too? I think when you have a community or a culture where the men are, are the, you know, the dominant force, and there's very few spots for a woman, all of a sudden, the misogynistic behavior isn't just man to woman, it's woman to woman. And it becomes extremely rampant from, you know, how everyone treats everyone, and, and, you know, in my lifetime, I remember feeling at times throughout my life, oh my gosh, you know, I have to protect my spot, and mm -hmm. feeling threatened by women. And that's such a backward, you know, backwards way of, of approaching it. And so Bumble has this, been this amazing rebirth of, of doing things in a, in a new female forward way where we encourage more and more and more and more seats. We just build bigger tables mm -hmm. as more yes. people come to the, you know, come, yes. come to be a part of it. And it's just been a really interesting shift in culture. But at the time when you were going through it and you would go home, what would your family say? What would your parents say? What was the reaction that you were getting from family and friends even? Well, I was definitely not um, being invited many places during that time period. <clears throat> I think, you know, it's fascinating. Looking back on that, on that moment in time, 2014, 
anyone affiliated or associated with the word sexual harassment or the words gender discrimination or the word lawsuit, right? Yes, yes. Those were, those were scarlet letters. Yes. And that was not something any 24-year-old woman wanted to be walking around with. And it Whitney, was Because Whitney, you're perceived to be the problem. Not him, you're perceived to be the problem. Well, and it's not, this isn't even just about me. This is about every woman out there who has ever had those words associated with their persona, right? And I remember feeling just absolutely devastated the last few years because I know that I'm so much more than just a few words. And I know that my capabilities are so much more than that. And it, the way shame, guilt, and blame have been attached to women throughout history, um, it's just exciting to see this, this you know, this, this change of, of the tides right now, and it's, it's something you know, I've actively been campaigning for and waiting for, and it's just amazing that it's finally happening. And now, are you surprised to find that after going through what you went through at Tender, that you are now doing the same business? Only some would say better. Well, you know, I never intended in going back into dating. That was, if you had told me this the summer of 2014, I would have, I would have said never. No. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. You know, I think things happen the way they're meant to. And what I originally wanted to do with Bumble was rewrite the internet. I wanted to build the female internet. What did the internet look like? What did social networks look like? What did social platforms look like from a female's perspective? Had never been done. Mm -hmm. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. These were not spaces built by women. And I hated the way I was treated online, and it scared me. Mm -hmm. And instead of letting that, you know, bury me, I decided to, you know, go out and build the solution, what I felt was the solution. And, and it parlayed into dating um, because of a very persistent business partner. But I'm really grateful that it did yeah. because talk, it talk needed about, to be rewritten. Talk about your business partner. So you get a call. Sure. So here I am. It's the summer of 2014. And... Are you I'm, licking your wounds? What are you doing? No, you know what? I'm, I'm well, I'm, I'm crying, I'm drinking, and I'm brainstorming. <laughs> Truly. In that order? <laughs> crying, drinking, yeah, brainstorming? it depended on the day, but <laughs> every day had that yeah. mix. Um, and <laughs> when I was brainstorming, I was thinking, how do I fix Twitter? It's a big question. Um, and I was just being bombarded by hate. And then I started thinking, you know what? Maybe there's room for a social network that spreads kindness and spreads compliments and creates contagious behavior, but good contagious behavior versus bad behavior. So I started thinking about that concept and you know, went down to the drawing boards and started working on that and got an email out of the blue mm -hmm. from my now business partner, Andre. And we ended up meeting up. He tried to hire me to be his CMO of his company. And I was basically like, nope, not for hire. You don't want to hire someone like me, first of all, because you should be ashamed of me. Right? Mm -hmm. I just thought I was worthless completely. Mm -hmm. And then when we decided that I was not going to join his team, he heard my vision for Merci, which was what I was going to call this new Merci. project. Merci, which nice. is thank you, obviously. Thank you, yes. And uh, he said, really, really interesting, but you're going to do this in dating. And I was like, absolutely never, no way, uh uh. Like, no, not going to happen. And he was like, no, genuinely, like, look at the dating industry. This has to happen. You've got to create a better female platform for people to connect. And so I gave that a lot of thought, and then I started jogging my brain about why I felt so upset throughout college and throughout my romantic relationships, you know, f several of them throughout my life. And it several? Was, well, you know I mean? <laughs> more than two, yeah, more than two. Um, <laughs> so a couple plus. Um, but you know, it was, it was just the way women were always expected to be a peg below peg below the man. Man's in charge. He doesn't want to see you, he doesn't text you. Yes. That's his prerogative. Yes. You want to text him and ask why he doesn't want to see you, you are crazy, yes. right? Yes. Completely yes. crazy. And you're, you're clingy too. Oh, you are clingy, yeah. you're a psycho, you're too much, he's never going to like you. They're making <laughs> movies about it, they're writing books about it. Your girlfriends are, you know, teaching you the rules of the quote unquote game. And I kind of said, well, hang on, I don't like this game. I don't yeah. like the way that works. If I want to make the first move, if I want to go after what I want in my life, I should be able to do that without shame, guilt, or blame. I, I want to talk about that for a second, but I'm curious about your partner. I'll, and then I want to get to about women making the first move. When you said to him, you don't want to work with me because I'm worthless, it's interesting that you would feel worthless when in your mind you didn't think you had done anything wrong. 
But when he said, when you told him, I, you don't want to work with me, I'm worthless, what was his reaction to you? He said, I don't care what anybody says about you. I know you're talented, and I don't care about any of that, and we're going to build something impactful together. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating in this moment of you know, women supporting women and females being there for females. Looking back on it, I'm only on this stage with you because two men in my life, my now husband and my business partner, supported me through a very dark moment. And of course, there's been incredible women along the way, but the, the beginning of it mm -hmm. was the support of two men. And, and I think that's an important message for this moment in time. Men are part of the solution. Yes. yes. You know, a lot of them have been the problem, but now it's time to be part of the solution. Yes. And yes. Yeah. And so I, I just think that that stands for you know some something. Mm -hmm. And and when you said that men have been part of the problem, but now they want to be part of the solution, it almost seems like the scarlet letter has become a badge of of courage. Do mm -hmm. you feel that? I do. Because yeah. Because what happened to you? This would not happen to you now. If, if, if you had gone through um, what you went through with the tender back then, if you had spoken up now, you would be believed now. You were not believed then. You know, and, and I, I, I have the opportunity to sit and feel sorry for myself. Like, wow, you know, how, how was that the reaction to me back then? And how did I not have the reaction that others are having now? But I'm so proud of how things are changing. And I... I think that I also need to look at how many women before me for centuries yeah. have gone through so much worse scrutiny surrounding them having a voice, right? And so it's a shame that it's taken this long, but you're absolutely right. It was very much a scarlet letter. And only until very recently has it turned into a badge of courage, a badge of honor mm -hmm. for a woman to go out there and just own her voice and, and you know, speak up. Well, owning your voice when you, you know, when I first heard about Bumble, and the first thing I heard was women make the first move. I just think in society and in culture in general, women are, are we are raised not to make the first move. That's right. Certainly not making the first move in dating. That's exactly right. And you're saying you sort of want to flip that on, on its side and say, nope, why shouldn't we make the first move? Exactly. So we're programmed from the time we're very young. We're given these roles. You know, little boys come home from the hospital and the parents start saying how strong they are as newborns and yes. how they're going to be doctors and lawyers and they're going to change the world. And a little girl gets home from the hospital wrapped in a big pink bow and she's so delicate and they already yes. need to protect her from, from predators. And, you know, that's where it kind of starts. And then, you know, little boys kick the girls on the playground and that's because they like them. Yes. And yes. it's just this backwards. They pull their hair yeah, they because pull your they like They think you're cute. Yes. And it's just like, well... That actually has a really dangerous effect when you are at the age of really, you know, dating and going out there and having relationships. And, and I think that, you know, here we are fighting for the same jobs, for the same education, for the same goals in life. We are equals in a lot of way or in terms of what we're meant to go after. Women are meant to, you know, be ambitious in their careers. They're meant to be ambitious with their education. And, you know, more women are, are receiving degrees, you know, than men. Than and men, yes. it's it's just backwards that that one section, when it comes to the most important facet of our lives, our relationships, mm -hmm. you know, that's your love life, that's your friendships, that's your work relationships, all of your relationships, that's at the core of everything. There's nothing without that. Mm -hmm. But they're broken. Mm -hmm. And women did not have equal footing and still don't. And so what, what we wanted to do with Bumble was say, let's rewrite these rules. And let's also rewrite the accountability of the internet and bring those together. And women should make the first move in their love lives. They should go after it. And something really fascinating takes place. This is not a gimmick. It's not hocus pocus. A man grows up facing rejection at all times. He is expected to go after a woman. We're talking about you know, heterosexual re relationships. Yes. Yes. He's meant to go after a woman. She's meant to run away from him and play hard to get. So you have this constant rejection taking place. And on Bumble, you know, that rejection gets replaced with flattery mm -hmm. because there is no need to feel rejected and there's no need to then, behind your profile photo, become aggressive or mm -hmm. abusive. Mm -hmm. And so it's really rewriting the way we, we treat each other but on a, on a you know, mass scale. Are you finding men like women to make the first move? From what we hear, um, unless yes, they are... Yes, what are you hearing, Whitney? Do yeah. guys like you to make the first move? Yes. And what is a good first move line? But answer There's the several. first question there first. There is no perfect first move. It's all about you. And I, you know, what we tell our team, and actually we had 
this profile doctor, um, you know, yes, situation taking place yeah, at the, at the activation. Yesterday. Everyone should go check it out. Um, it's it's cool. But um, yeah, you know, they actually give you suggestions, guys. On first, you know, they talk to you, get a sense of your personality, and ask you a series of questions, and then they have suggestions about what are good first moves. Yeah. I think I need to go back there today, <laughs> but, but, but go ahead. We'll go together. Yeah. Um, well, yeah Whitney, so you don't need to go. Whitney, by the way, is happily married. I'm, I'm very happy am, to say that about you. I'm very you. lucky to have found yeah, a yes, great, a great really person. You really did. You really did. Thank you. Okay, but but a are they are you? Do you think men like us to make the first move? And I would really like to know some examples of what is a good first move. Yes, and you know what? Who cares if they like it? Because we should be allowed to do it. Women should be allowed to go after what they want. <laughs> Who cares if Who they cares? Like, yeah. like <coughs> We don't need their approval, okay, right? We're yes. all equal. And um, by the way, just a note to the men in the room, we need to do some work on, you know, when you do make the first move, how you do it. Because that's, <laughs> that needs some uh, serious help. <laughs> but give me some examples, though, of Let's a good... See. Okay, so you see a woman's profile, and she's riding a horse, or she's outdoors, and doing something active, and it's a beautiful day outside. Instead mm -hmm. of just saying like, hey, hi, what's up? Well, now we're talking about, okay, men, women making the first move. Sorry, we just got sidetracked. Yeah. Um, so vice versa, a woman sees you know, a profile of someone being active or enjoying some type of activity. Suggest you know, something about that. You know, really dive into someone's personality. It's the hey, hi, exclamation, hey with two Ys, that whole thing. <laughs> Trust me, you can play with the word hey as much as you want. It's just not that productive. So, no, hey with two Ys I is mean, no it's longer like, cute. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's just, you know, all these different versions of it. I've learned so much about, about uh -huh. the word hey. Um, <laughs> there's lots of ways to say hello. Yes. But um, anyway, that being said, really ask people about their personality. Something that's amazing about Bumble is a picture that speaks a thousand words. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a coffee shop, all you get is what you see, right? If you see someone across the room, you don't know what they like to do on the weekends or you don't know what they do for work or where they went to school. You really don't know anything about that person. And Bumble gives you this vast insight into somebody's you know, interests and who they are. And so play that up, you know, and really, Go out there and don't be scared of what someone's going to think about you because it does not matter what matter. someone thinks about you. That's another thing we're raised to think too. It mm -hmm. matters what people think about you. Does it, should I assume everybody in the room knows how Bumble works? Or do you just want to hear a just crash course on how it works? Oh, crash course. So, okay, okay. I, I'm on Bumble and I, I put up my picture and I see somebody and I like him. And I make the first move. I have to, he has 24 hours to respond, or I have 24 hours to respond. So you're swiping on Bumble. And by the way, it's worth mentioning, and I just want to put this out there. Bumble is no longer just a dating app. We've actually not been for a long time. No, because we have, you have a friend BFF finding, business, right? Yeah. BFF for finding friends and Bumble Biz, which is great for connecting and networking. Mm -hmm. So it's at this point a full-fledged social network, you know, to find new connections. So you get on the app, you swipe. When you see someone that you're interested in, you swipe right, mm -hmm. and if you are not interested, you politely pass, left, mm -hmm. and then um, women have the, you know, the control, and so women are to make the first move, and once they make the first move, first of all, they only have 24 hours to do so, so they can't sit on that idea for six and a half months or whatever uh -huh. people do in apps, uh -huh. um, and then men have 24 hours to respond. Uh -huh. So it's, you know, there's um, some sense of urgency there to really emulate the real world. We don't want you what to... What happens at the end of 24 hours and it's gone? It disappears. Okay, so you can't reconnect with that person. Well, again. you can pay to reconnect. Oh, you can pay. <laughs> okay, so we have 24 hours to figure it out once yeah. we make the first move. Okay. And then from there, it's up to the woman to initiate the what's going so to happen she, next? So she makes the first move, and then it's, it's fair game, you know? Uh -huh. There needs to be a response from the man, and then, um, and then they get to communicate as they wish. We're not going to dictate know how that conversation takes place or what they what they choose to say but I will say you know we are the first social platform to ban any behavior that we perceive as misogynistic such or as, abusive such as. so you know if somebody says something aggressive or something that you know is is hateful or rude or disrespectful that person gets blocked we're building the society we wish existed in real life. You know, why is it illegal to steal a pack of gum from the gas station, but you can have, you know, you can be assaulted in the gas station. You can have someone slap you on the, you know, the bottom, I'll be very politically correct in here. Um, and that's not reprimanded. You know, why can 
misogynistic behavior live in the real world with no repercussion? And why should it live digitally without, without any consequences? And so, you know, it doesn't make everyone happy. There's obviously some people that don't agree with us, but they don't deserve a place on our platform. Mm -hmm. And so they are permanently banned. Right. Um, I think it's interesting, too, that you decided to expand to Bumble BFF. And I want to talk about Bumble Biz, but I want to talk about Bumble BFF because, number one, I, I just think um, friends and family are some of the most important relationships you will ever have in your life. And I find the older you get, I think it's very difficult to make new friends. Mm -hmm. So what was your thinking behind BFF? Yeah, so BFF was inspired largely in part to our early team. We were working so much and we kept saying to each other, we have no friends. <laughs> we have no friends. We're here. We're working all the time and people are sick of hearing about Bumble. So we have no more friends. We're just friends with one another. And we were thinking, you know, what if we could meet other women in the area that were also really passionate about what they were doing? Because, you know, friendships are a funny thing. No matter how much you love someone, you can grow apart, right? Yes. And there's this interesting way of, you know, people break up romantically all the time, but this concept of breaking up with a friend is taking place, but it's not ever spoken about, and there's so much, there's so much guilt attached to it. You have mm -hmm. to, you know, carry these friends forever, and that's not healthy. There's poisonous friendships in this world, too, and so we wanted to expand in, in, in friendship and say, you know what, why can we access a date so easily? Why is it so easy to go meet someone for a, a coffee romantically or whatever it is you're looking for? but you can't just go find a new nice friend and not everyone's looking for a date. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, we evolved into friendship and it's been so exciting to see that take off. There's groups of women of you know 60 plus going on vacation together now and in certain cities, we just heard of something recently in Atlanta where there's a meetup that, that now has grown into the hundreds and they're all from Bumble BFF. But and how so does, people how are does forming it, these communities. How does it work, how does it work, Whitney, without sounding like, will you be my friend? How, how, <laughs> does, how does that work? Well, I think it's interesting. What digital dating was even five or six years ago and how that was you want to go for a date, like yes. online, like how it was like very similar and kind of creepy. Yeah. Um, that's been normalized now. So Bumble, the way we built our brand, we did not build a brand that would feel, you know, very romantic or too hypersexualized. It's it's just a brand rooted in very basic things: kindness, equality, empowerment, mm -hmm. and accountability. And those values extend beyond romance. Those values lend itself to finding friends. And when you know you're on a platform that encourages the, those things, the, the, the oddness is erased. The, the creepiness factor is gone. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist. And so people are actually really willing and able to find friends. And they're and, there for the co same common thing. And it's platonic relationships for women. Yes. So well, women men can their... use it too, but only with other men. Okay, men can use it with men and women for women. Yes. And strictly, uh, listen, we just really want to be friends. There's yeah. nothing, no agenda there. No. Other I, than we just want to be friends. Lots of, um, lots of people are putting in their bio, you know, we've seen a lot of Netflix. We've seen a lot of wine. We've seen a lot of stuff that I also enjoy. But um, it's, it's just a lot of showcasing your hobbies and what you're interested in. New moms are saying, you know, I have mm. a, a two-year-old and I'm looking for mom friends. I mean, women need to connect with women. It's yeah. an important yeah. piece. Like you said, such an important piece of life. There's something too about the bond of a woman's friendship too yeah. that I think is very, um, it's very enduring. And I think it can get you through a multitude of sins and can get you through a, a variety of crises in your mm -hmm. life that's something that men can't do. There's something about, there's something- Female that, friendships are very powerful thing. They're very powerful and very needed and necessary. And now, you're st now you've started um, Bumble for Biz. Are you trying to give LinkedIn a run for its money? Listen, LinkedIn is I'm amazing. I'm very good friends with Jeff Wiener, so be careful. <laughs> no, I we love lo that, I love listen, that company. We love, we love LinkedIn. Yes. It's a great company and we're very different products. Actually, we're completely different products. LinkedIn is this really fantastic platform for searching for you know, specific jobs or connecting with business professionals and sharing knowledge and getting a lot of content and advice. And it's a fantastic platform. I mean, come on, mm -hmm. it's LinkedIn. Um, but what we're trying to do is say, what we've done for dating, what we've done for friendship, well, let's take that a step further. What's the other part of our connections that matter to us so much are business our work, contacts. Yes. And even if you love your job, it's 
important to feel connected to your community. The other, you know, I'm, we're in tech. It's great to know other tech, you know, for myself, I'd love to know more tech founders and more tech executives in the city, and that's really important. And so what Bumble does is it's hyper-localized, shows you who's in your area, mm -hmm. and you swipe on you know, common interests or common industries, and, and that's how you connect with one another. So it's, it's very different from LinkedIn. It's not, it's not you know, the same need. It's really more of just connecting and, and getting to know each other and having access to that. But you had a very cool uh, activation yesterday. It was the elevator pitch mm -hmm. where, did you guys see this activation? You go up in the elevator, you have one minute to tell your story to make your pitch and you're being judged. And I saw a woman outside the elevator and she was so stressed by it. And I said, oh, you know, no. it's not a real elevator. It's not a real elevator. But you set it up so it's a competition. You got on that elevator, explain that, because I thought that was a very fun activation. Yeah, so, you know, and we want it to be collaborative and encouraging and definitely not scary. So we definitely don't want anyone to feel like they're, you know, under scrutiny. But it, it's just a fun way to go in and actually consolidate your thoughts. And I think something that's so important for people that are looking to start a business or they're so passionate and they want to be entrepreneurial, sometimes it's hard to find your elevator pitch, right? So you've got this big idea and you've got so many, you know, great thoughts around it, but what is it in an elevator pitch? If you were in the elevator with you know, your, your idol and that was the person you wanted to invest in your company, what would you this tell them? This is your shot. This is your chance. Yeah, and yeah, we want yeah. people to feel like when they come to our activations, they're not just coming for some Tito's and Topo Chico. They're actually coming to walk out of there with some type of insight into how they can go out and chase down their dreams. Mm -hmm. And I, it, it's interesting, though, how seriously people were taking all your activations yesterday. I mean, I, it, you set it up so nicely. Number one, everybody who was manning the activations I thought was great, and everybody was very engaged. I mean, you set up a very friendly atmosphere for people to come. We have an amazing team. I, I mean, yeah, I, I met them. There's nothing I've ever been more proud of in my life than how passionate and inspiring each one of our team members are. And, you know, I think it's so important. You know, here we highlight CEOs and founders all the time, but truly the people that deserve the recognition are the people making the dreams come to life every day. And you saw a lot of those amazing employees yesterday. So people take it seriously, though, because our connections are serious. Our, our relationships are very serious. And they, you know, the health of your relationships is, is the health and happiness of your life. You know, you're only as, as healthy and happy as your least ha healthy relationship. I'm a firm believer of that, and we want to help you build healthy, empowered relationships. And what are you looking for when, you're, when you hire someone? Because I've interviewed, uh, talked to Shonda Rhimes. Shonda Rhimes, you all know of Grey's Anatomy and um, How to Get Away with Murder and Scandal, big, big powerhouse on ABC. And years ago, she told us in Oprah Magazine that she has a no assholes allowed. She said, I don't care how talented they are, mm -hmm. how great they are, what their record is. If, there's an, if they're an asshole, I don't want them. And if we discover that they are, then they're out. Yesterday, I talked to Kendra Scott, who's another badass, who also is based here in Austin. She's, She's amazing. amazing, guys, of, uh, the, of, of jewelry fame. Her favorite color, also yellow. Also, that's, that's really right. big in bubble. Yellow's a good one. And she said, we have a no <laughs> bitches allowed rule. We won't. On the team, her, her company, by the way, is 98% women because she believes working with women, empowering women is something that's very important. Mm -hmm. She says we have a no bitches allowed rule um, in the people that we look to to hire. I'm wondering, do you have any kind of rules or what you're looking for? We do. We have a huge sign on our wall that says be kind. Be kind. And that's really our golden rule. Um, we have a no, well, we're also very female, um, not, not 90 but yeah. 98. Mm -hmm. We are 85% female, and we do say that there's no mean girls allowed. Mm -hmm. Mean girl behavior is not welcome here. Um, you know, it's not about kicking one another down and trying to climb this ladder without others. Our team is really about collaborative behavior, and if we're going to go out and preach to millions of users through push notifications and branding, that they have to be empowered and kind and you know equality and all these all these incredible values we better be walking the walk mm -hmm. and so that's something we take very seriously and also have a zero tolerance for bumble recently made news um we we covered it on cbs this morning when you decided that you were not going to allow any uh any users to display guns in their ads yeah, yeah. tell me what came about how that came about so you know when i founded this company it was a strong reaction to any type of abuse I'd experienced in my life. That digital abuse, psychologically abusive relationships, watching family members go through that, friends go through that, and I wanted to build this you know, antidote to that. 
And when you think about abuse, and then you think about how abuse can escalate into domestic abuse, and when you look at the real statistics around domestic abuse, women die every year in insane, insane high numbers from domestic abuse. And what is at the center of that conversation? Guns. Mm -hmm. And we Most do women, not... by the way, are killed by people they know. That's right. Most women are killed by men who allegedly loved or love them. Abusive relationships yeah. are extremely serious. It's, it's more serious than people really um, assign value to. And, you know, when you look at our values, when you look at why we were founded and how we, how we operate, those values that I've said a hundred times, and I don't want to bore anyone, but you don't line up kindness, equality, empowerment, accountability, and then guns at the bottom of that. They just, one of those things doesn't go with the other. Mm -hmm. So that was the concept. Did the recent shooting in, in, in Florida have something to do with it? Absolutely. I mean, was that sort of the tipping point for you? You know, yes, I would say it was the tipping point. It's a conversation that we've been having for years. Um, it's something we've thought about long before, um, you know, these awful, awful devastations have been, you know, kind of growing in really insane numbers. But we, we w watched that and we said, why should we normalize or romanticize something that is taking lives mm -hmm. in such a violent way? This is not a place for violence. This is not a place for us to highlight violence. And, you know, that's not us judging people who are responsible or have their hobbies. That's us saying, that doesn't live mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's it's not, not going part to of work our here. System. No. Did you get any kind of backlash from it? And are you worried about alienating a, a big portion of your users? No. Um, no and backlash? I've said this, well, lots of backlash, oh. but not worried about alienating. Oh, okay. And the reason why I say that is, you know, we will always put our values before our bottom line. End of story. Um, I, f I fully believe that's the only way to create any change or to build a strong, you know, mission-driven company. You're going to lose some fans along the way. And I probably have more people that hate me than like me at this point in time, but that's okay because mm -hmm. I feel like we're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And I think the right thing prevails in the end, and um, you, have to, you have to wear that. <coughs> you also made news recently. I got the biggest kick out of this. Here's the Clippers basketball team. Uh -huh. They are wearing the Bumble logo on their jersey. How? <laughs> so, this is a really interesting Sorry. situation. I know, I'm, I, it's allergies. Austin does this every I time. I know, I'm cold. Oh, no. I'm trying not to cough, but it's killing me. Cough, Maybe you cough. could cut, cut my mic for a second. Okay, you talk. Okay. Um, <laughs> so why the Clippers? Why, you know, a lot of women were like, wait, I'm confused. Basketball is such a misogynistic culture. Why, why would you go into an industry like that? And we said that that's why. Because we're not only going to extend our values and our reach to companies that are part of a, you know, perfect, perfect, you know, gender split and perfect behavior. We want to make impact where impact still needs to be made. And why we chose the Clippers was they have the only female president in the they league. Do. She's amazing. And they have a very strong female team of leaders. And they care, genuinely. It's not a marketing ploy. They genuinely care. When you sit down with those women and you speak to them face to face, at first we were very opposed to even thinking about the industry. And when you really spend time with them, you're like, we've got to do this. Like, this is important. We have to change the conversation in, in industries that need it. Mm -hmm. And that was so exciting to have the Clippers so excited about that, you know? So did they call you or did you call them? We, I can't remember exactly how we got connected, but I, I believe one of our um, team members connected the two teams, just mm -hmm. thinking, hey, this could, there could be some synergy here. What and was the reaction from the guys on the team, I was wondering? I thought it was the coolest thing, because first, I wasn't sure what I was seeing, and it's very prominent. Yeah, so it was actually, I, I got emotional watching it. You know, we came up with this campaign called Stronger With Her, and some of the players wrote it on their shoes that night. And the concept was to say, you know, what makes these players and what makes the people in this audience and what makes the fans of the Clippers, who are the women in their lives that make them stronger? And everybody in the audience um, at halftime held up these Bumble signs with hashtag stronger than her. And it was so emotional to watch Aww. these men writing mom or drawing lines to their wife that they were with or writing these women that inspired them and made them stronger. And so it's really about changing the conversation and, and highlighting the need for equality in, in industries that still need work. What advice would you give your younger self um, from the time that she was pushed out of tender to now being the CEO of Bumble? the lessons that you've learned from that? Um, 
I think the advice I would give my... And you're still pretty young, by the way, but yeah. I don't feel it. <laughs> yeah, you're so, still pretty young. I'm really not feeling it anymore. It's been a long few years. But um, the advice I would give myself is don't be so hard on yourself and that everyone's really just trying their best. And as long as you know that you're doing the right thing, do not care what people think about you. I was so paralyzed. Isn't that easier said than done, It is, though? but I was so paralyzed for so long by people's opinions. I mean, if I read a bad tweet or someone said, oh, so-and-so thinks this about you, it would dishevel me. I mean, I would be devastated. You know, there were points where I didn't know if I could get through the day. Oh. And at the, at the end of that, looking back in hindsight, opinions are just opinions. And if you don't want anyone to have an opinion about you, literally sit and do nothing at all times. And then they're still going to have an opinion about why you're doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it, you're never going to win. So I think that would be my advice is just keep your head high, do the right thing, and just carry on. Well, you've read bad press about you. What is, uh, what is some of the good press that you've read about you that makes you proud? Um, I try not to read press anymore because really? it kind of scares me. Um, no, you we know, always I'm, say we're not going to read it, Whitney, but then there's a part of you, isn't there a part of you yeah, that just Yeah, then it's 2 a.m. Google's just, the yeah, just to see, well, what did they say? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's been interesting. You kind of read about this person you don't know. You know, you're reading about yourself, but you don't recognize that person. But I think that the media has made such great strides, and the one piece of press that I'm so proud of and... I can never ever get over it as I was on the cover of Forbes. I and saw. Claire O'Connor wrote yes. this really fair and truthful story and it was just, uh, it was such a moment that for my team and for me that, you know, in what world am I gonna ever be on the cover of Forbes? How does that happen? You know, yeah. that was the craziest thing in the world. Um, I barely made it through college and my dad is like, is that a real cover of Forbes? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's one thing I'm very because very didn't proud your of. parents get called when the lawsuit was coming? Didn't they call your parents and say what's going on with her or what is she doing? No, my or? parents had a lot of friends that were <clears throat> trying to kind of disassociate with our family. Mm. Oh, lawsuit girl. Yeah, that's not cute. Um, that's not cool. Yeah, and so I lived with that for several years. Even friends from college. I mean, I think I was the butt of a lot of guys from college just j jokes for a long time and it hurt but I found a band of badass women that had my back and we kind of tuned them out and went to work and people are like wow that thing has a lot of downloads now and we're like <laughs> yeah it does so it's been it's been cool of all the places why did you decide to settle in Austin I love this city we love Texas yeah um, I went to school in Dallas and S SMU mm -hmm. my first hire actually our first office was out of her parents house here and it was really free office space. Thank you to the Ellis's, if you're in here. And uh, <laughs> Thank you, Ellis's, yeah. yes. And we ended up, you know, it's funny, her mom would see these monster trucks pull up in the morning, unloading like boxes and boxes of t-shirts with Bumble on it. And she's like, Caroline, are you sure you want to be working for this girl? Like, what is this company? They're just really <laughs> taking over my rooms with merchandise. So it worked out, but um, it just evolved. You know, our first hires were here, and I just kind of followed them. Uh -huh. um, and here we are. And can you tell us how you fell in love with your husband? I think it's interesting that he did not seem deterred either by all of the press and all that you had gone through. No, you know, he's amazing. And um, you know what, he, he's, he's a feminist. He believes in women's rights and he does not, he's not down for misogynistic behavior. He's just not into it. And so a lot of what a lot of guys would have been like, yes, that girl, stay away, stay away. Yeah. she's scary, she's yeah. dangerous. He was like, you're, you're badass, I like you. So uh -huh. it, it worked out. And um, it, yeah, it, it was lots of ups and downs through those years, but truly just believing in what we're doing. And he's, yeah, he's just a great guy. And he's guy. not in this business, is he? No, he, uh, he hasn't checked email in like five years, I don't think. <laughs> Very jealous of that. <clears throat> what does he do? Um, yeah, he's actually in the oil and gas industry, so it's very different. Oh, yeah. They're like yeah. worrying about dirt and land and well, not, we're always going to need world. oil and always going to need gas, so that's good. Well, maybe. What, what's your end game for Bumble? <laughs> 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 what, what's your end game for Bumble? Where do you I see? want to go to every corner of the earth where women are and make sure that that every single woman on this planet knows that they should make the first move. It's okay to make the first move, and they are equal, and they should be empowered, and that's all that we care about. All right, thank you, Whitney Wolf Heard. We're gonna take questions from the audience, because I'm told a lot of people have questions for her. If you're gonna put it on the screen, how has the Me Too campaign changed online dating 
and specifically Bumble? Good question. Is that our question? Yeah. OK, so how do I feel the Me Too move movement yeah, has can changed? You, can you put yeah, that question Sorry, it's a back. different That's question a different now. One. How has the Me Too campaign changed online dating, and specifically Bumble? Listen, you were one of the original Me Too campaigns, actually. Well, I we didn't call it that yeah, back then. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's interesting. It's it's so amazing to see all these women supporting each other now. But I can say when that was going on, no women reached out to me. No one wanted to. No be, women reached out not, to you. Not very few. Very, really? very, very few. And it was almost like I was, you know, an embarrassing association. So I would say the way the Me Too campaign has changed dating and specifically Bumble is that. I think more people are aware, um, when I say people, I mean more men now are aware of that this bad behavior is going to be held against <coughs> them. And so maybe hopefully it will change the way they think about it and change the way they're behaving. And I think it's incredible to see women on our platform standing up for themselves. And I think we've seen, we've seen a, lot of, a lot of support around that. And I think it's interesting because we, Bumble has was kind of built for the Me Too movement before it ever happened. Mm -hmm. And so I just think the timing is um, now, you know, they're kind of colliding. With so much understandable negativity surrounding the women's mo movement, what's your advice to women who want to really move the needle forward for women? Uh, I would say channel that negativity and use it as opportunity. And every single woman has a really <coughs> strong voice, and every single woman has the ability to do incredible things. And like I said, do not let people's bad opinions stifle that opportunity. Um, only, only you can hold yourself back. You just have to go out and make the first move and just go for it. Don't let anybody take that away from you. You haven't always had that attitude, have you? No, yeah. definitely not. So how did you get to this? Um, like I said, a lot of because crying, of what you went wine. Through? No, lots of hard work. And it's been my team. Honestly, building Bumble has, has changed me and saved me. And, going out and just fighting for it every day with every new user we, we get and you know every new team member we bring on board. It's just inch by inch and day by day, but um, you know, there's still days where I'm extremely insecure and unconfident, and I think that's natural. Women should not be held to unrealistic Whitney standards. Whitney Wolford, what are you insecure about, please? Um, well, today I'm feeling pretty secure. This is, this is pretty cool. <laughs> I'm with you on Can stage. Can someone bring out that Forbes magazine, please? <laughs> the one where Whitney's on the cover? <laughs> yes. No, but it's normal. I mean, women are allowed to feel ups and downs, and we don't always have to have this, you know. No, you know, it's so funny. Uh, Diane von Furstenberg, uh, I was doing an interview with her, and she said, you know, there, I have so many days when I wake up and I feel like a loser. Don't you ever feel like a loser? And I said, no. I never feel like a loser. You can have a bad day. Yeah. You can have a bad day. But I said, Diane, you actually wake up and feel like such a loser? I, I never feel that. I find that hard to believe. Do you ever believe. wake up and feel like a loser? No, I don't I, feel like a loser. And listen, we can all have bad days. I'm not saying I don't have a bad day where things don't go right or you don't feel great about yourself. But I was so struck by her with all that she's accomplished, saying that she wakes up feeling like a loser. You know, I will say that I think every successful woman I have met has a sense of vulnerability to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's something that keeps them going and propels them. If you wake up every day being like, I'm on top of the world, yeah. everything's perfect, I'm gonna go get an iced tea and sit by the pool, you're not gonna do anything. Yeah. So I do think that having a healthy level of vulnerability is what makes so many successful women continue. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, there's natural insecurity no matter, no you know, matter every, who everything's are. relative too, you know? And, and so it's, um, it's okay to have bad days. Amen to that. How does Bumble make money? Okay, so how does Bumble make money? Bumble makes money through a subscription service and through coins. And so in, um, yeah, so it's, it's been very successful. We're very excited about it. Something we're really proud of is we have 45% of our paying users are female. And that's unheard of um, in, in this industry. And, and so... Um, how much is a subscription? It depends on which version you buy. but. Um, 2018, we should do over 150 million in revenue. And, and whoa, that deserves applause. That deserves applause. <laughs> and, and, and who is your audience? Is it a certain age range? Is it, is it a certain economic range of people that you're going for? You know, our audience, it, it, the values that I laid out, those extend beyond any age or any economic system. You know, it, 
Do you have Those women over 40 on Bumble? Yes. Do oh, you? my gosh. Over yes. 50? All my mom's friends are on Bumble. All your mom's friends? Yeah, my mom. We just celebrated my mom's 60th birthday, and they're all bumbling. It was uh, surreal. So, you know, well, this Are there this men is... on there over 60? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Cute ones, apparently. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really cute well, ones. Well, everybody does talk about the quality of the men that are on Bumble. Is that something that you strive to do? I have heard that. Well, the I define the quality of men on our platform by their values. If they're on there, that means they are okay and appreciate a woman making the first move. Mm -hmm. That's a quality guy to me. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really proud of all the men on our platform, the ones that you know are really excited about women taking the lead. And I was reading that Match reached out and wanted to buy you for like 400 something million dollars, and you said no. Well, I can't comment on that right now. What part can you comment, that they reached out to you or that you said no? On or that it was $485 million. We're just going to do a blanket <laughs> no comment on that entire thing. Okay. How do you... I know I am dying to know. I meant to ask you that backstage. Like, is that true? And you turn that down? Okay. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Tinder soon to be releasing a feature where women are able to make the first move? Where'd they get that idea from, Whitney? Um, I actually <clears throat> don't know where that would have come from. <laughs> but you know what? Listen. More power to them. Whatever company out there that needs work in that area, good for you. Like, go out there and try to find a way to be more empowering for women. I, I commend them. I think that's great. But I'm glad you we were able to be a source of inspiration. You don't have a little bit of residue of anything against Tinder? Nothing? Mm, no, I actually don't think about Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. One of your mottos is, become the CEO, I really like you, Whitney, <laughs> become the CEO that your parents always wanted you to marry. Mm -hmm. I love that. So Where did you get that This from? is what something is we're really proud of. Actually, I believe Alex, our head of brand, came up with yeah. that yes. zinger. Yes. Good yes, job, so Alex. Good job, go. Alex. Um, yes. You know, this is a really important message because I don't know for all the women in the room, but I know that when I was growing up, my grandma was like, are you dating a nice lawyer or a doctor or a CEO? And it's like, Grandma, no, I'm going to be a CEO. Uh -huh. You know, and so I think that so many women have just been raised to go out and find a man to take care of them. And you know what? If you want to do that, great, good for you. But we are saying, you know what? Go out and be the CEO. You know, you can take control of your life, and you don't need someone to do that for you. You mm -hmm. do not need, you do not need a man mm -hmm. to take care of you. Not financially, but I think having a guy's a nice thing. Yeah, but, but if you want someone to be there who's kind to yes, you and nice yes. to you, think about. Um, the, the seriousness of financial independence. Yes. So they say, they meaning all the studies we've read, financial independence is one of the strongest ways to eliminate abusive relationships. Yes. And so when you take these relationships where women are completely dependent on their spouse, you know, and this is between women and women and men and men as well. Mm -hmm. it, financial dependence doesn't only apply to heterosexual couples. But it's a great way to establish um, equality in a, in a relationship. And so that really plays into that, that mm -hmm. motto. No, I was raised in a house that everything was 50-50. Fantastic. <clears throat> My mom was at home. But, you know, <clears throat> I now think uh, if I got married again, instead of the 50-50 or ours is ours, I sort of like mine, yours, and ours together. So you have a pot, I have a pot, and then we have an ours pot. I think that's, that's a great way to approach I it. I do too. I do too. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Because when I got divorced, I had to pay. So I'm thinking, I don't yeah, want to do that We're again. not doing that again. I don't want to do yeah. that again. And my children are here, so I'm not going to say anything You have the that. best kids ever. Uh, I'm so impressed with your children. <laughs> so here's a question. If you could jump back to when Bumble was only 50 employees, what would you focus especially on right now? I love reading that you would go into the office and you would have a, 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 a what did you call it, a happiness check with the Yeah, that, with your team? that got a little difficult when we grew bigger because uh -huh. going around the room and asking, you know, dozens of people what their happiness level is. Yeah. yeah, you know, I really care about culture. I think that if I'm fortunate <laughs> enough to have been able to start a business that all these amazing people are willing to take a chance on, I better be trying my hardest to see that they feel appreciated and they feel valued and that their voice is heard and that they count. And um, so back to that question of, you know, if we were just 50 employees, mm -hmm. culture, 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 it's, it's just the key to 
a healthy company, and then that extends into the product and into the way the users feel. And so, I you know I wouldn't even change it. Our team has been so amazing about carrying culture through, and mm -hmm. um, you know I just don't know if I would change anything. Yeah. I'm I'm really excited with the mistakes that we've made and the the good things we've done, and it's all part of the journey. Yeah, culture matters, and it starts from the top. What percentage of the technical jobs at Bumble are filled by women? So a lot of the tech, a lot of the tech jobs at, at Bumble are filled by women. Don't have the exact specifics off the top of my head, but you know what? Something I'm really proud of is our lead iOS engineer is a female. She's so amazing. A lot of our um, tech team has a lot of women, and then our U.S. based team is 85 percent female. Um, so overall, when you calibrate the entire workforce of Bumble, it does add up to about 85 percent. If you got a board offer for another startup. How would you make a decision on whether to join or not? Is it going to change the world? Is the founder passionate and capable? And is it taking a step towards the values I believe in? Mm -hmm. And then I would get on board. Mm -hmm. Next one. Next one. This is a cool system. Yeah, I, I like this. Yeah. I like this. It's called Slido. I like Slido. Uh, is Slido something that's well known? They'd probably pay a lot of money to get a shout out like that from you. So I, I, you might want to think is it about well that. Because the other day I just discovered something and they, like, what was it? It wasn't Sweet Greens, but I, I just discovered Sweet Greens recently oh, and my daughter goes, really everybody already knows about that. <laughs> but there was something else that I thought, no, mom. That, so I heard uh, laughing when I said Slido, so I don't know if that's new. All right, here you go. Um, is there a plan to update the app where we can differentiate? whether we're looking for a relationship or just friends, FWB, friends with benefits, et cetera. I'm impressed that you knew that. What I mean? didn't know that. <laughs> I was saying, what is FWB? So that's good. All right. Um, yeah, so I'm actually very hip. We're, we're, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm just, I don't know that. I just don't, I don't even know what that stood for. So I'm, that's great. Um, is there a plan to update the app where we in different uh, So you can already do that right now. Not the FWB feature. Um, mm -hmm. That has not been rolled out yet. <laughs> we'll think about that. That doesn't seem like that's something you're trying to do. No, Friends with no, benefits. not yeah. And listen, if you want to have an empowered FWB and you're going to feel good about yourself, yes. go for it. Go for it, But yes. no judgment. Um, you can already toggle between friendship or dating and biz right now. So you can actually currently be on the app. And we did something kind of cool that I'm really proud of our team for. In the dating mode right now, you can actually disable it. So if you're married or in a relationship or you just like to be single, which is great also, and you're having yes. fun, you can disable dating and it timestamps it. So it holds people accountable. So, you know, I've had a lot of friends say like, well, I want to get on and use BFF, but like Mark's going to get mad at me if I'm on Bumble. And I'm like, Mark can chill because you delete dating and it timestamps the date. Oh, okay. So if you join Bumble today and you're on it for six months, it shows that the dating has been disabled Got for it. six months. So, you know, we're trying to hold people accountable from doing, you know, or she could just say to Mark, look, I'm going on this and I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, but Mark really can chill. Yeah. If it's that, then Mark he, should chill. If, if it's that big of an issue, you've got other problems with Mark. That is true. <clears throat> that is true. What are your thoughts on reducing ghosting from the app? If you had told me a big par portion of my life would be thinking about the word ghosting, yes. I would have maybe chosen a different industry. <laughs> but um, no, you know, ghosting comes from accountability, right? People hurting one another that's either disappearing or saying something mean. It all comes back to accountability. And so that's what we as a team are working towards every single day. What new feature can we introduce that will you know, take a step in the right direction that will eliminate people just disappearing on one another? Um, we have not gotten to the complete root of this question yet, but we're mm -hmm. working on it. And we do have a couple really exciting features coming out in late Q2 that I think they don't exist anywhere else, which is exciting. And I really think they're going to help eliminate this. So stay tuned. S stay tuned. More to come. You know, um, when I was talking to Alex yesterday, I really, she left me with this. You and Kendra Scott, I think, have a lot in common. I was so blown away by her. I just met her yesterday for the first time about how she feels and how she moves in the world and what she wants from her company and what she's putting out there. And Alex said to me that one of the main things that you all believe is equality is achieved through kindness. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, wouldn't it be great if we could spread that around? And you're yeah. talking about um, a kindness in all areas of your life. So talk about why that is important to you. And I want to end with that. Kindness is free. And it's also the most 
you know, it's the most healthy thing in the world to just be kind. And when people are kind to one another, it creates contagious behavior. It truly does. It's proven scientifically. And if we could spread good behavior, we truly believe that that can have a lasting effect and recalibrate so much of the hatred in this world. And a lot of hate stems from relationships because if you have a hateful relationship in your love life or your, your workplace or in a friendship, that, that toxic nature spreads into every area of life and then it spreads into others. Mm -hmm. And so let's not spread hate, let's genuinely engineer kindness in our platform and make sure that that's at the root of everything we do. Sometimes I wonder though if people really want kindness because you know when I was coming up and I'm really not that old, but you were encouraged to do the right thing, you were encouraged to be good to each other. And you look at reality TV shows and I watch all the ratchet shows. I watch the, <laughs> the Real Housewives, the Love and Hip Hop, all of it, I watch it, but I sit there with my mouth open going, this is terrible. But on these shows, people are encouraged to be their worst possible selves and they end up winning. You know, and I think that I, I sometimes wonder what, as a society, what do we really want? Because I really do believe what you put out is what you get back. No, I completely agree with you, and I believe that, you know, it's about rewriting that. So look at four years ago, a woman going out there and standing up for herself, that was shamed, right? Because it was yes. against the status quo. So we need more call to action from business leaders and from people of influence to show that kindness is cool. It's cool to be nice to each other. It's not cool to pull each other's hair yeah. on TV. And how do we actually engineer good behavior? And so it's gonna come from the top down, you know? We have to lead by example. If you look at the other social platforms out there, no one polices bad behavior. Yes. They assume that that's why they're viral, but what needs to be understood is just as bad behavior becomes viral, good behavior can be viral as well. So let's choose good. All right, Whitney, I am cheering you on. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.